Microsoft Teams is always being improved and changes are being made that make the experience of using Microsoft Teams more effective. One of the things to be aware of though, is when they roll out new features in Microsoft Teams, those features are not always available to all regions at the same time. Sometimes it takes a while before it'll hit your region and you'll have those features available to you. A perfect example of this is team meeting features. On a Mac, I've had to share out my audio when I'm sharing files and such on a Mac, and I've gone through three different ways of doing that. I had to go through and install third-party software in order to take my system audio and push it out into Teams. I then had a situation where it was working as long as I shared out audio with my Mac and had the volume up a bit, so I think it was picking up on the speaker. But now it's built right into the Teams meeting experience in my environment. So this feature may or may not be available in your region yet, but it will be as it slowly gets rolled out. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you in this video. Okay, so I'm very excited to show you some of the features that are going to be available to you. Hopefully they're available to you now, or they'll be available to you shortly with Microsoft Teams for Mac. I know these are features that I've been waiting for for a long time, and I've had to do a lot of workarounds, but now there are some sharing features and some audio features that are built right into Teams that no longer require you to get third-party sound drivers or do that. There's drivers directly available within Teams. So let's start up a meeting. So I'm going to start up a new meeting. It's just going to be a meeting of one, and we'll call this... Uh, and what I'm going to do here is you'll notice that, first of all, it's a standard meeting experience. I can change background effects. So I could go in here and I could put a background effect. I get a preview of what it would look like, put myself inside a building, put myself in an office, whatever the case may be. However, some fantasy setting. However, and you can download your own as well. So if I go down to the bottom here, so you can see I've got some that I downloaded here as well. So by clicking the add new, you can upload your own pictures. So this is a picture of mountain that I took on the Rockies, and this is my city that I live in. But in my case, I'm just going to go in and not have any background effects, just because my wife did this shelf for me, so I'm pretty happy with that. So we're going to go in and I have the background effects. I'm going to close that down, and now I'm just going to join the meeting. So now I've joined the meeting, and when I join the meeting here, you're going to uh, get a uh, access code that you can share with others. So you'll get a tile here, so you can get a meeting link, you can add participants, which will invite them, you can share via an email. So this tile is, is common to us, so I'll go ahead and close it, and I'll show you how I can get that back. Now, if I go into the ellipse, this is going to give me all of the controls for how the meeting is going to run. So many of these we've had before, but I'm just going to review them quickly before I go into the sharing menu. So if I go into device settings here, I can choose my audio devices, my camera settings. If I go into the meeting options, these are very important because I can determine whether I'm going to hold people in the lobby and then invite them in as they come, or whether I'm just going to allow them to directly join into the meeting. So I can have control over who bypasses the lobby, who gets held, and then they get invited in. Um, I can also go in and announce when callers join or leave. I go in and I can say who can present you know, just me or the, or just people in my organization, or will I allow everybody to present or specific people even. And then in terms of the mic for the attendees, I can start everybody in a, I can I turn off their microphone. So I can have it so that they can't use their audio. And that's good if I'm just doing a presentation where I don't want the background noise, somebody forgets to turn off their mic and they're really just there to look at what's happening. And then again, reactions, whether I allow applause or hearts and all that type of stuff with the reaction menu, which is up here. So whether I turn this off. So it'll just turn off these four reactions. Uh, the hands up will still exist, even if you turn off the allow reactions, if you slide that over. So I'll just leave that at this defaults. Um, again, if I go into meeting notes, you're just taking notes. It's, it's not that exciting. If I go into meeting details, this is where I can get the join information. So I can get the joining information. I can share that out, the, the tile that came up when I first started the meeting. Down below, you can do things like gallery. If you have more than nine people in the meeting, you can get the large gallery, so you can see little postage stamps of everybody. And then together mode, that's demonstrated all over in my videos, where you can basically set a unique background, such as an <clears throat> auditorium. And that for that, you need five to 50 people. And then you can go full screen to avoid distractions. You can go to the background effects if you want to change them during a meeting, or you want to change them here. <coughs> you can change them there. And then live captions is very handy. So if I turn on live captions, now it takes a few moments to turn on. 
But live captions are great when I have a situation where some of the participants might be in areas where they don't want to turn on the audio, they don't want to listen to the meeting, they don't have a set of headphones with them, and they just want to be able to read what's happening. They can turn off the sound for their computer and they can read what's happening. So live captions can be useful. And I'm just going to go in here and turn those off so that they don't distract us during this demo. Now I'm going to go into the ellipse again and you can record the meeting. And if you have integrated teams with a voice system, uh, that's through your IT department, you can actually have, um, you can dial people. So you can work with the dial pad. So that's very good with the ellipse meeting options there. I'm now going to go into the sharing menu. Now, a couple of things with the sharing menu. I have Safari here and I have this on the IBM page. And I have Edge here and I have this on uh, CBC, which is a, a news, news organization up here in Canada. So those windows are open on my Mac. That's important, okay? Because when I go into sharing, if I go in, you'll notice first of all that I can include computer sound. So this is a slider switch. This used to be a hassle and now it's fantastic. You just click it and now you're including your computer sound with whatever you're broadcasting or sharing. There's a gotcha to this though. So stay tuned because you want to watch this for sure. You'll notice that I can share a screen. My computer, I only have one screen and that's my MacBook Pro screen. But if I had a second or a third screen, I would be able to share out an entire screen to my audience. That's very handy for teaching, but subject for another day. Notice Windows, it says four. And if I click on the Windows here, you'll notice it gives me my meeting, it gives me my Teams down at the bottom, the tense channel that I'm in, and then it gives me CBC and IBM. Notice that other programs that are running, but not maximized, they're not open on my desktop, do not show up. And if I go in here, and I'll go back here, if I open up another program, so let's open up yet another browser. So I'll open up the Firefox browser. Seems pretty innocuous, I'm just opening up Firefox. Takes a few minutes to open up, and then I'll go to a web page using Firefox. So we'll go up to Firefox here. Hello, Firefox, and I'll go in, I'll go to YouTube. So if I go to YouTube, okay, so I wanna go in there, and underneath YouTube, uh, maybe I'll go into, so we'll just cancel this here in terms of a trend micro for now. And under YouTube, I will go to Learning and Technology with Frank, because that's a great, channel to go to. So I'll go to Learning Technology with Frank and there's a whole bunch of videos there that I might want to share. So let's go back to my meeting. So I go back to my meeting and wait a minute, there's only four windows. Hey, there's no Firefox. It's broken. Well, it's annoying, but it's not broken. You have to go out of the share menu, go back in. Notice there's now five windows. So this is very important. The window you want to share has to be open on one of your screens. Okay, then when it's open and you go into it, now you'll see Firefox is available for me to share out. And then here's the second slightly annoying thing. Notice here, to include computer sound, it's off. So by default, it goes off again. I have to turn it back on. And now when I share this out, my meeting minimizes. I am now sharing out that Firefox and you'll see there's a red banner around Firefox. And now if I was to play one of these videos, this is being, I'm giving you another ad. This, this, <laughs> this video is now being shown to my audience as the red indicator, as the red line shows. And this video is pushing out system audio. In other words, they're hearing it. So I'll go in here and I will stop sharing by hitting the X. And again, five windows are open. Five windows is what I see. And just to prove that if I go into Firefox and I will well, go into Safari. If I go into Safari and I close the IBM website and I go back into my meeting down here, go into share, notice there's now only four windows. IBM is gone. Now I can also use the Microsoft whiteboard. Don't. I don't like the Microsoft whiteboard, the built-in Microsoft whiteboard. In fact, I'll show you. When I go in to use it, now again, I forgot to click the button that says use system sound, although I'm not putting audio on here. This is gonna spin for quite some time and maybe it'll start and maybe it won't. I've never had much luck with the Microsoft whiteboard, even on a Windows system or a Mac system. So I'm gonna stop presenting that. What I will do instead is I will use a different tool such as Sketchbook Pro, which is available for free. I have videos on the channel about that. Or I will use a really cool web-based whiteboard tool called Hey Hi. 
hey hi you pay for you get three boards free you pay for the rest it's really good i have a longer tutorial on the channel about that or i will use the auto sketch to do some some basic stuff as well so microsoft gotta get working on that that's not the the greatest feature there and now PowerPoint Live is really good. I can upload files, PowerPoint files from OneDrive or browse my computer and upload. And maybe I'll do an entirely separate video just on how to use PowerPoint within meetings. And then there's Freehand, which is a drawing tool. I've never used that very extensively either. But notice going in and out every single time, system audio turns off. System audio turns off, that's the default. The default is to turn it off. So if I do wanna go in and share, better make sure that I click it back on, and then I can go in and browse my computer for a PowerPoint or upload one from, from OneDrive. Make sure that you're always checking to see whether the system audio is included if you're going to include any audiovisual files. So I hope that was useful for you. I hope you found that interesting, and I hope that that's uh, something that you'll start using. Comment down below, share it with other people that might benefit from this, and definitely if there's anything I can help you with, let me know. If it's not in your region yet, I'm awfully sorry. I just got it last week up here in Canada, so I, or in my tenant in Canada. I don't know if it's been on the East Coast, West Coast, or where it's been, but I certainly have only experienced uh, seeing that in the past week or two. That's why I wanted to make this video really quickly. So there are some other workarounds if it's not in your region um, to get audio and to do some of those things. I have lots of videos on my channel about that, but now we have the new experience. It's pretty exciting, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to see it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was useful. And if you want to see other videos on how we can use technology to teach and learn better, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Also like the video and share with colleagues that might benefit from it. Here are some other videos on my channel that you might enjoy. Thank you once again for watching.